I think that killer instinct, it just takes the right circumstances to bring it out of you. It's shocking when it happens. When you realize you've taken a life, it sure took Miss Bennett by surprise. It only took her a second and poof, Mr. Stewart's dead, gone forever. Poor Vera, you're probably wondering, so? What happened after Miss Bennett cracked Mr. Stewart's head open with a hammer? Vera couldn't believe it. One minute she's making love to the father of her child and the next she's bashing his brains in. She laid on that floor next to Mr. Stewart's dead body and cried her eyes out while baby Grace laid screaming in her crib. Oh. oh, Jake, Jake, oh God, what have I done? Vera, no, we have to stop the bleeding. Go, get me a towel. There's nothing we can do, Vera. No, no, he's not dead. He's not dead. Vera cried on that floor next to Jake for almost an entire hour. Ferguson looked after Gracie the whole time. When Vera finally pulled herself together, she went into little baby Grace's room to check on her. How is she? Fast asleep now. Oh, my sweet girl. She'll never know her father. And it's all because of me. It's not your fault, Vera. It's mine. Had I... Had I not come here? No. I hit him. He was going to kill you. You would have died if I didn't do something. You saved my life, Joan. Because of you, I got to go home to my daughter the night of the explosion. I had no choice. I just wanted him to stop. I... I didn't mean to kill him. Oh, God. There's only one thing we can do now, Vera. We have to bury Jake's body. Back in Wentworth, the women were in an uproar after Erica Davidson ordered a lockdown. She should know better. Lockdowns never solve anything. The women won't lag. Fine, this Sasha Malenkovich, she was innocent. But was she really? I mean, she wasn't exactly a law-abiding citizen. But does that make her life any less valuable? Either way, innocent or not, she was walking around that prison with the freak's face. It's no wonder the women shipped her. Poor Mr. Jackson. He's always been such a good man. He tries so hard to make life better for the women. And these damn general managers, they just won't let him. Life is so unfair. Especially when you're in Wentworth. I've got Milenkovich here to see you, Governor. Thanks, Miss Miles. Come on in, Irina. Have a seat. I do not want to sit. I want to know who did this. We don't know anything yet. I'm sorry. Irina, do you know if your mother had any enemies in here? Enemies? Oh, Mr. Jackson, please. The entire prison thought my mama was that freak Joan Ferguson. They all wanted to kill her. We will find out who did this. My mama did not deserve what they did to her. She was a good person. She came to Australia to help Mila and me. Promise me you'll find whoever did this, Mr. Jackson, because if I find out who did it, I'm going to kill them. I understand your grieving, but you cannot go around making threats, Irina. Go back to your unit. I'll handle this. I promise. When's this bloody lockdown gonna be over, eh? No one's going anywhere till they find out who killed the freak sister. It could have been any of the women. We all hated her. Wait, so you all hated this freak? Joan was an evil cunt. 
and she hurt so many people. And she was dangerous, and if her sister was anything like her, whoever killed her did us all a favor. Miss Westfall, I've never heard you talk like that. It's this place, Boomer. Pretty soon you'll be shimming someone in the yard, won't you, Miss Westfall? <laughs> <sighs> Irina, stop crying. How can you say that? My mama is dead. What is wrong with you, Mila? You haven't even cried once. Da, she is gone now. She's dead. Tears won't bring her back. You have to focus, Irina. We will find out who killed on Sasha. And when we do, they will pay. With their life. And how are we going to find out who did this, huh? How? Irina, Mila, I... I heard what happened. I'm so sorry. You are not sorry, so save your condolences, Cassie. I was just... Let her go. She needs to be alone. I didn't tell anyone anything, Mila. Good. You are not as dumb as you look. Hey, Miss Miles, is Mr. Stewart in? Oh, I haven't seen him. What about Vera? Uh, no, she called out for the day. Gracie isn't feeling well. Oh, okay. Well, Jake is probably with them. All right, then. about a lockdown? Yeah, what about it? You don't really think a lockdown will make the women lag, do ya? Frankie, I won't tolerate violence in this prison. Prison being the key word here. Where do you think you are? Violence and prison go hand in hand, Erica. You cannot stop the bashings. Keeping them locked down only makes them worse. Trust me, I know. You have to lift the lockdown. Absolutely not. It hasn't even been 24 hours since Sasha's murder. If I lift the lockdown now, the women will think my rules are a joke. They'll think I'm a joke. If you keep them locked in their units, they'll find a way to rebel. I'm telling you, you don't know the women like I do, Erica. Lift the lockdown. Come in. A busload of prisoners is about to arrive. Luke Kelly's on it. Long time no see, Mr. Jackson. Back for good this time, eh, Kelly? Oh, fuck off, Mr. J. Slot her. Are you fucking kidding me? Damn, Lou, what the fuck? We just got here. You're Michelle Ramirez? The one and only. I read your file. If you try any of that shit you pulled in New York, you will be sorry. Michelle stood outside the intake office watching the women walk by. She wasn't afraid like most newcomers are when they first walk into Wentworth. This was not her first time in prison. She grew up in places like this, just like Lou and Boomer had. The three of them used to be the best of friends until Michelle's mom took her to America. She thought she'd stop fucking up and get on the right track without Lou and Boomer around. But she was wrong. Dead wrong. Full name? Michelle Ramirez. Date of birth? August 24th. Year of birth? But none of your fucking business, bitch. Year of birth. Ask your mom. Yo, I'm just fucking with you. I could knock all your teeth out right now with one swing. I dare you, bitch, with your fucking aggressive ass. When was the last time you got fucked? Linda had reached her boiling point. She was so sick and tired of these women and their disrespectful shit. Linda hadn't thought about her mom in years. And now, here was this new inmate bringing her up. Who the hell did she think she was, Linda thought to herself. Her upper lip quivered with rage. She stared into Michelle's eyes and gripped her baton. She lifted it up and was about to swing right at her head when suddenly Mr. Jackson walked in. Linda, 
What the hell are you doing? Give me that. Will grabbed the baton from Linda's hand and instructed one of the screws to take Michelle out of the room. He turned to Linda with a concerned look on his face. What the hell is going on here, Linda? She was being insubordinate, refusing to give me her full date of birth. You have got to get it together. Have you gone to counseling yet? Not yet. But clearly you need to go. Look, I get it. Your PTSD, your trauma, but you cannot continue taking it out on the women. It's not fair to them or to you. Go on. Go home for the rest of the day. I'm fine, Mr. Jackson. We're short staffed today as it is. I said go home. We'll manage without you. Joan sat in Vera's car, driving towards the woods that Will Jackson buried her alive in long ago. She chose to put aside her vendetta against Will after she regained her memory. She realized she wanted to be better. She wanted to be more like Kath Maxwell. When Vera let her get away, she chose to reach out to her birth family. She just wanted a relationship with her twin sister, but then Wentworth got in the way. They pulled up to the woods and they both got out of the car while baby Grace was sleeping in her car seat. They stood in front of the trunk for a moment, silent and still, and just stared. They just stared at that trunk door, both of them knowing what was behind the door. Then suddenly, and without warning, Joan yanked the trunk door open with a fury. She grabbed Jake by the head with both hands. She pulled him out of the trunk with one strong and swift motion, and before they knew it, Jake's body slammed onto the forest floor. Be careful with him. He's dead. Oh, for fuck's sake, Joan. Pull yourself together, Vera. If not for you, then for Grace. I thought I could do this, but I can't. I can't marry him. I can do it alone, but that would take a lot longer. Anyone could drive by and catch me digging Jake's grave. Why did I let you walk off into the night? Why? Had I just turned you in, Jake would... Jake would still be here. But you did let me go. And Jake is dead. Time does not walk backwards. Only forward. And life is too short to be filled with regrets, Vera. You have got to find the strength to do what has to be done. Why here? A little something I like to call poetic justice. You're glad he's dead, aren't you? I am. Oh God, what are we doing? Go ahead then, call the authorities and tell them what you've done. Tell them how you bludgeoned your lover to death. The truth shall set you free, Vera. Except that this truth, your truth, will put you in a cage for the rest of your life. And what do you think's gonna happen to Grace if you're in prison? Now do you see, Vera? Now do you see why some secrets must stay buried? In that very second, a switch was flicked in Vera's mind. Little Gracie had woken up. She heard her crying from inside the car. Vera grabbed a shovel and began digging. Joan looked on in wonder. Her pupil was blossoming right before her eyes, giving in to the dark side that lives inside every single one of us. Never had Joan been more proud of Vera. After a few minutes, Joan grabbed a shovel and helped Vera dig. They dug well into the night, and by morning, Jake's body was buried deep, deep in the ground, never to be seen again. Yeah, come in. So, was there anything on the CCTV footage? Nothing useful. Cassie Ray was seen walking towards the showers, but she didn't go in. We have no idea who killed Ferguson's sister. Did you question Cassie? Yeah, so did the police. She doesn't know anything. Outside Mr. Jackson's office, Mila sat quietly, listening to their entire conversation. Cassie was seen by the showers. Maybe she could use this to her advantage. Well, question her again. 
She's the only lead we have. Oh, and Will, I've decided to lift the lockdown. What made you change your mind? Frankie, <laughs> she's quite persuasive. Attention compound, attention compound. The lockdown has been lifted. I repeat, the lockdown has been lifted. The women were all happy to be out of their units. They hated eating their meals in their units like a bunch of teenagers who had been grounded and sent to their rooms to repent. Over at the H1 table, the women began talking their shit. Oi, Nancy, are you gonna eat that sausage or just play with it? Oh, I'm gonna eat it. It's the only kind of meat I eat. <laughs> Good lord, such vulgarity at the lunch table. Here, Boomer, you can have mine. I'm not very hungry. Who's that? No bloody way. Boomer couldn't believe her eyes. It was Michelle. She hadn't seen her since they were teenagers. She was so happy to see her, she almost flipped over her tray of food. Oi, Michelle, over here, you dirty cunt. Boomer, oh my God, it's so good to see you. Damn, girl, you haven't changed a bit. Oh, shit, get the fuck out of here. You having a baby? <laughs> yeah, remember when I had the pretend twins and named them after you and Lou? Oh my god, I remember. Yo, have you seen Lou? They let her out. Good riddance. Michelle looked at Ali and gave her a mean stare. What the hell did she mean good riddance? As in good riddance to bad rubbish? Lou got released a couple of weeks ago. But Michelle was still glaring at Ali. And then she says, What's your name, Ruya? Ali. Well, Ali, I hate to burst your bubble, bitch, but Luke Kelly is back. The women were all congregated in the yard, enjoying the fresh air. It was a beautiful day. Mila and Irina sat on a bench just staring at the women with disgust. The H1 girls were all sitting together. As the women hung out, Cassie Ray walked out into the yard. Mila watched as Cassie began walking towards them, and then she remembered what she heard Mr. Jackson telling Erica Davidson. Cassie Ray was seen walking like shadows. Mila smiles and says to Irina, Cousin, I must tell you something. I overheard Mr. Jackson telling the general manager that Cassie was seen on the CCTV footage. They saw her walking towards the showers the night Aunt Sasha was killed. Irina sat in silence. She felt her skin getting hot, and her heart began to beat with the fury. She looked at Cassie, and the next thing you know, Irina jumped up and ran towards her. She punched her right in the face. Cassie screamed in pain as Irina continued punching her over and over again. Irina! What the fuck are you doing? I know it was you. I know you killed my mother. Irina continued swinging on Cassie, punching her in the face and the head repeatedly. And then Mila joined in, kicking her in the stomach. The women were all screaming and cheering. Irina, stop it. Leave her alone. The screams in the yard ran to get Irina and Mila off of Cassie. As they ran towards them, a bunch of the former youth offenders attacked the guards and they all began fighting. It was a full-blown brawl right there in the middle of the yard. Inmates versus staff. Linda pulled out her baton and began swinging at the cats, not something out. While this was going on, Irina continued attacking Cassie. And then Mila saw it. One of the guards dropped their batons. Mila ran and picked it up and gave it to Irina. Irina raised her arm up, baton in hand, and looked down at Cassie's bruised and bloody face. Then she said, You killed my mama, and now I am going to kill you. Irina, please, don't. Cassie begged for her life as Irina bashed her with the baton over and over again until Cassie's head split wide open. Her brains leaped right out of her head onto the cross. Irina continued bashing Cassie. Blood was splattering everywhere. Mr. Jackson finally made his way out to the yard and grabbed Irina from behind while Mila stood back watching the whole thing. Irina screamed out, Is she dead, Mila? Mila, is she dead? Da, she's 